Today we're in Czerny Most at the end of the yellow line in Prague, Czechia. We are going to use this yellow subway line to go on a big adventure through the city. So let's get on with it. Quite an interesting station design. There's a lot going on here, a lot of concrete walkways, a lot of different levels for car parks, the metro itself, and also bus stations due to the fact that it's close to motorway junctions. For some reason I can never quite resist a funky looking walkway and we have one like spiral one in some kind of greenhouse looking contraption. I'm still not sure why I was so excited about this but it is kind of cool that there's a stair spiral in the middle of it and then a ramped spiral around the outer part that then leads into the entrance of the station. Here we can grab a little snack from one of the stores or we can look outside the other part of the station and see the motorway which is why there are so many services including buses from here because it's a very handy location for getting around. Heading down the stairs towards the platform we're going to need to get a ticket. There are a few different options for this, a 30 or a 90 minute ticket if you're just doing one journey. If you're staying longer or using the Metro more you can buy a 24 hour or a 72 hour ticket that I'm using here. This costs 330 Czech krona, which in conversion to pounds is about £11.50, £12. And because I love maps, hopefully you lot do too, here's a map of the journey we're going on today from Czerny Most in the northeast down to Zlichin in the southwest, a journey total of about 22 kilometres. And after a short journey, here we are arriving at the second station, the award winning Rajska Sahrada. Designed by Patrick Kotas and opened in 1998 as part of a yellow line extension, Rajska Sarada literally means Paradise Garden or Garden of Eden. So I've got off at the next stop, Rajska Zarada, if that's the right pronunciation, um, for two reasons. One, because it's an interesting station in terms of its design, and one of the tracks going one way, like east, is uh, below the one going west, which is interesting rather than being side by side. The second reason was there was some obviously drunk guy on the carriage carrying a bottle of beer, shouting at everyone in Czech. Um, I guess you get these people everywhere, but it seems a bit rougher, the Czerny Most area, than anywhere I went on the red line yesterday. There was also, um, comedically, an old couple, woman, man and woman, and the woman dropped a massive fart as she walked past into the subway. And the old man was obviously furious and just shouting at her, but in, a, in an amusing way. So that was fun. Anyway, we're going to get back on the metro and go a few stops further towards the city because there should be more things to see. And that's pretty much a flavour of what you can expect on the channel. One minute award winning stations with cool platforms above each other and the next minute stories of beer and farts. So remember to like and subscribe for more of that. We're now getting back onto the metro and heading a few more stops to the west. And here we are arriving at Krizikova, which seems to have an endlessly long escalator to the ground level. By this point in the day I was pretty hungry, and it did not take long for me to spot food outside the station, so it was time for a pit stop. And also a rather random change in the weather. So I got off at this station for no particular reason other than it was quite close to the river, so I thought it might be a nice walk down there, but I decided to get some food in this cute little street. Wherever I am, I think it's a, it's a Czech chain. Um, I don't mind a chain place, get your food pretty quickly. Hopefully it is Czech, at least be a bit cultural. It looks as though the weather is about to be on the turn. It was kind of cloudy and humid, and then also really sunny, sort of just interchangeably. Um, but it does look like some kind of storm might be coming in. The wind is definitely getting up. You can see it on the trees there, and it's graying over a lot. So this could be interesting for the rest of the video. Um, let's see where we can go and what we can see and hopefully it's not going to rain. The one day I don't bring a hat, rains. As you can see in the footage, this little mini storm caused people's clothes to fly down from balconies onto the street and also some mopeds to be blown over I guess. It wasn't great weather for filming and as you could hear in the previous footage it was really windy. Not good for background noise or trying to speak to the camera. So we picked this up the next day at Nemesti Republiki. We're now heading through this stunning gothic structure known as the Powder Tower or the Powder Gate. Construction of the tower began in 1475 and it was originally intended to be an attractive entrance into the city. It ended up becoming more of a defensive tower and in the 17th century it was used to store gunpowder, hence the name. 
and we're now arriving into one of the most famous sites in Prague, the Old Town Square. This is my third visit to Prague and if you've never been, the square definitely is just as impressive every time, it's a must visit. It's such a lovely place to grab a drink or some food, sit in a bar or restaurant, but right now the biggest draw is the astronomical clock. The clock was first installed in 1410 on the side of the Old Town Hall, making it the third oldest astronomical clock in the world, and the oldest astronomical clock still in operation. Every hour on the hour, the four figures flanking the clock are set in motion, putting on quite a show. I thought I'd leave the actual sound on for that bit, unfortunately there was a baby crying, but that's the problem with big crowds, so let's get out of here as quick as we can and back to the metro. We're now wandering through more of the beautiful streets at the other side of the Old Town Square and heading towards the next station on the Yellow Line Mustek. This is one of the main central shopping areas and it's home to all of the typical international stores that you would normally find in a big city. And here we have Mustek Metro Station, which as you can see from the sign is on both the green and the yellow line. Very few change stations on the Prague Metro. Let's have a quick look around the Metro Station and then head down to catch the train further west. And by the magic of YouTube, we've arrived at the next station, Narodny Trida. So we're off at this stop looking for a monument to the Czech writer Franz Kafka, so let's see if it is here. This spinning sculpture of Franz Kafka's head has to be one of the modern hidden gems of Prague. Weighing in at a massive 45 tonnes, it has 42 rotating layers. Let's watch him spin. Quite a quirky monument. I've never seen anything like that before where it actually rotates. It must have been really hard to make that in the image of Kafka, but then also for it to be able to spin as well. Looks as though the timing was quite lucky and it was spinning as I was there, but then it stopped. So I'm not sure when it spins again. I was tempted to get more shots of it, but I don't know how long we'd have to wait there for that. So I'm gonna try and walk down now towards the next subway station, because there's meant to be some nice parks and this is also going towards the river so the weather today is much better hopefully we'll get some cool views down there let's see and cool views we did get what a beautiful area of the city this is to walk through what a cute little park the weather is perfect for just laying about sunbathing today but we've got places to be things to do this street should lead us down in fact i can already see it in the distance to the dancing building or dancing house whichever you want to refer to it as and the voltava river a quick check-in at the next yellow line station carlovo and Amesti, but we're not going to go in there we're walking down that street in the middle of the screen to the iconic dancing house the building was designed in 1992 and eventually completed four years later in 1996. The building is designed to look like a couple dancing together and was originally called Ginger and Fred after the dancers Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. The architects later discarded their own idea for the name because they were apparently afraid to import American Hollywood kitsch to Prague. We're now crossing over the bridge to the other side of the river in search of the next Yellow Line metro station. It's a fairly short walk, maybe five or six minutes to the next station, Andel. This area had a bit more of a rough and ready type of vibe, but there were a lot of shops and a lot of fast food restaurants. If you just wanted to grab a McDonald's or a KFC, you're gonna find it here. And so it's back down into the Metro to head further west into the suburbs. After a short ride, we've reached our next station, Hurka. The weather continued to be quite changeable between cloudy and sunny, but as you can see here, the sun is beating down through these beautiful glass panels casting shapes and shadows over Herka metro station. Time to head outside and see what's here. So 
So we've got off at Herka to have a look at Centralny Park, so some kind of central park. I think there's like a tennis centre and a lake or maybe a river running through it. So we're going to go and check it out. You can also see the tunnel that the metro goes through. The station um, at Herka was a bit more interesting but different to some of the others because it was actually above ground. It's kind of a cool little space tunnel that the uh, metro goes through. I have no idea where I'm going now other than I'm in the park. So I assume if I walk through the park, I'll find something interesting. Yeah, so let's hope so. So my random rambling probably tells you that it was pretty hot. At this point, it's hard to put that across on the screen. But this area really was one of the hidden gems for me. Absolutely beautiful with the lake, the metro tunnel going across. I would probably try and get an apartment somewhere like this. Hypothetically, of course, if I was rich and could just buy wherever, but it would be interesting to know the price comparison between here and Central if you're a local and you know that kind of thing. Well, this is the clearest, sunniest and best weather of the day by a mile. You probably can't pick up how humid it is here all of the time. Um, so the weather has been highly changeable in terms of whether it's cloudy, clear, sunny, raining a bit, but the entire time the humidity is crazy. And even if it's sort of bearable outside, inside it's just really not good. I feel like maybe most of the time it's not warm enough here, other than maybe July and August, to have good aircon. So places do have aircon, but it doesn't seem very effective against this uh, heat and humidity. But outside now, it's pretty nice. Definitely sweaty weather. So we'll have a look around this park a bit more, and then we're gonna go to the final station on the yellow line and go to the airport as well. And yes, you guessed it, British people, we love to talk about the weather. Cold, hot, rainy, clear, we will talk about it. In other news, there are plenty of great tennis facilities across the city. You can see why Czech players, particularly in the women's game, are doing really well at the moment. Some rather interesting messaging on the graffiti, each to their own, I guess. It's now time to head back into Herka metro station and head even further to the west. And we've made it to the final station. If you want a quick tutorial of how to get to the airport, that's coming up. So we've reached the end station of the yellow line, it's Leachin. It's time to have a massive slab of pizza because I'm starving. And then we're gonna see how obvious it is to get the airport bus from here. Okay, let's see if we can get to the airport. I'll most likely put another separate video for this on the channel that is slower and has more detail. But if you're the kind of person that likes your information quick and concise, here it is. So you're gonna be looking for bus 100, which departs from stand number four. You can see that on the previous sign. So look for stand number four, which is over to the right. You'll also see airport related signs getting ready for your departure, but be aware that there are other buses that also depart from this stop. So make sure you're getting number 100. You can also use the same ticket that you've been using on the Metro, unless it's a 30 minute one that's probably timed out. So if you've got 90 minutes or more, you can use the same ticket. If you have a new ticket validated on the bus. The journey to the airport takes about 15 minutes. You can stop at Terminal 3, followed by Terminal 1, and finally Terminal 2. Well, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Um, I do read them all. I love all of the studio statistics and all of that. So help me out if you can, and I'll see you in the next one.